Hey guys, welcome to Hurting Little Cats to the Glory of God. It is Thursday, the 23rd, 23rd, 24th, I don't know, it's a day. And so, what did we do today? Well, we slept really good last night because Josiah only had one seizure when he woke up this morning, which it is common, Josiah lay still. It is common for Josiah to have one, like seizures going to sleep or waking up. Those are like the most common times for him to have them. And after the last couple of nights we've had, I was very excited to wake up this morning at like 4.20. No, I don't know, what ta whatever time it was that he had a seizure. And I was like, ah, oh, yay, we slept through the night. So actually it wasn't 4.20 that he had a seizure. He woke up to go to the bathroom and then he had the seizure at like 6.15 when he woke up. So, that happened. So we got up a little bit late. Things got going a little bit late because we got home yesterday from our camping trip and it was a little crazy. Um, the kids and I swept the floors like right after breakfast. What do we have for breakfast? Oh, we had egg sandwiches, which is what we had for supper last night, but everyone really liked them. So we had them again. Um, we swept the floors and the kids got rags and we washed the kitchen and dining room floors because it's been a little bit since we've done that. Mark went out for a walk with Josiah. We all went outside, moved the van, and put it closer to the garage, put up a table, and we took everything out of the van. Like, everything. Everything. Including, the owner's like, manual. <laughs> the owner's manual, the car seats, the um, tire iron. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Everything came out. We reorganized all the boxes and stuff that go in the van and washed, sorry, vacuumed the floor and everything. We did not wash down the dashboard and stuff. And while the kids, two thousand gospel tracks in the process. Yes, while the kids were doing that, Mark and Josiah and Naomi were working on putting the wording on our van. So now one side of the van says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." And what's the other side say? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So those two verses are on the van now. So they worked on those. We worked on cleaning. Like, the kids got everything out of the vehicle for me. Virginia vacuumed the vehicle while I organized all the boxes. So being a large family, I don't know what you need in your vehicle, but we need a lot of stuff in our vehicle. So we have a box in the front that contains all of our, like, stuff we need every day on our trips back and forth. We have a diaper box. Instead of carrying a diaper bag with me everywhere we go, I have a diaper box in the van. So it has a change of clothes for this littlest guy and a change of clothes for Josiah. Sorry, I'm sitting like this because it's easier for Mark, but it's kind of weird for me. Um, mm. So we have a um, change of clothes for Josiah in there too because of seizures. seizures. And then a couple other things. So like some feminine products, um, like a brush and hair ties in case we need those along the way. So we refilled that box. It's that time of year in Maine that, I know this is gonna sound weird for some people in other states, but in Maine, it is still cool this time of year, sometimes. It's gonna so, be 48 overnight. Yeah, 48 overnight. Today's high was only like 63. We have friends down in Tennessee that were planning to do yard work because it was getting down to 91 today. We don't have that problem in Maine. It can be midsummer and you go somewhere and it's seven o'clock at night and suddenly the temperature drops and you need a sweatshirt. <laughs> it is not uncommon to wear a sweatshirt in the evenings in the summer in Maine. So we put sweatshirts in the car because this time of year, there's a lot of times you will leave the house and not need one and need one within an hour or two of leaving. So we put all those in the van. Um, what else did we put in the van? We found a box of tracks. We went through our entire stash of tracks to see how many we had. We thought we needed new ones, but we have a bunch, so we're going to keep using them. And that got all organized. Josiah's um, bag is all organized. Josiah's bag. So Josiah, because we have to take emergency medicine with us in case he has a seizure, we have a kind of a diaper bag. Not really a diaper bag, but that idea. We have to carry it out of the house every time we go. But it can't stay in the car because of the temperature changes that are allowable for the medicine. Um, also, 
a thing you don't deal with in other states. But in Maine, we have to have our reusable bags with us if we're going to go to the store because in Maine, we don't have plastic bags anymore. If you go to Walmart and you don't have your bags with you, they just pile everything in the back of your van and you got to watch, like, listen to it all roll around. And, you know, the watermelon fall out when you open the door and all that stuff when you get home because they don't put anything in bags. So we needed our box of bags put in there. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we have a portable toilet in the van. So that got replaced. So it's a little toilet that you can actually flush, but we take it with us so that if we have kids, if we're going out to do ministry and we're a place that doesn't have a bathroom, it works out really well. Oh, we also packed, um, because we live in Maine and there's beaches, um, we packed clothes for all the little people so that if we stop at a beach, we have clothes to change into. Because a couple weeks ago when Wayland was here, we stopped at a beach and everyone got wet and I didn't have enough clothes for everyone to travel home in. And their shoes so we had stunk. wet car seats. Their shoes stunk. Mark washed those last night. I think I mentioned that on last night's video. I just, I thought about the beach. Like, oh yeah, the this, beach because of running around. the muddy salt water. Um... So anyway, that took us a while this morning. We then did Bible. We read one of the weirdest chapters in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It was Judges 19. 19 yeah. And it talks about there's a man whose wife ran away or committed adultery. Concubine. Uh, sorry, his concubine. She either was mad at him or had like fornicated adultery, whatever, and ran back to her father's house. After four, four or so months, he goes to get his concubine. The father's very excited that he's there and keeps him there for days on end. On their travel back, they stop in a city. They're going to sleep in the town square. Some old guy says, nope, come stay in my house. So they go to his house, and all the men of the city come and say, let us do to that man everything that we want to, all these vile acts. And the old guy says, no, take my virgin daughter and his concubine instead. So they take the girls. Seems that the guy just, the guy with the concubine just stays at the house. And the next morning he's going to go to leave to go on his way. And the concubine's laying outside the door dead. So he takes the concubine and cuts her up in pieces and sends her to different tribes of Israel. And the war breaks out. And a war breaks out. What? So the church we go to, the pastor always says... The you know every part of the Bible remind, reminds us of God, man, and God's redemptive plan, and we see man. Sorry, where am I supposed to go? Move your hand. Okay, so we see man in this one, man doing what he wants to do, and then cutting up the concubine and sending her. And I I don't know I don't know what he's gonna say about it on Sunday. We, we found we did have some interesting discussions. Um, why would you send out your virgin daughter and the concubine instead of being a man and going out and kicking some butt or just locking everybody in the house? And I, I don't know. It very much reminds us of um, Sodom, and Sodom and Gomorrah, where they want to take the angels and they say no, take the daughters instead. I don't know. Very weird story. So if you know why that part is in the Bible, please let us know. We know it's in there for a reason. We know God wanted it recorded. Do I know exactly why it's there? I think to show us exactly how depraved are when there's no king in Israel and every man does that which is right in his own eyes. Very depraved. <laughs> and we That's are not that depraved only because of God's grace. Right. Like, we are depraved. Total, totally depraved. And God keeps us from doing those depraved acts. So, I don't understand. So we did that. <laughs> then we had lunch. For lunch, we had burgers and roasted and broccoli. broccoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really it was good. Really good. Burgers, roasted broccoli, and we had something else. I don't remember. Cornbread? Cornbread. That's right. Cornbread with little black flecks in it because Virginia <laughs> used chia seeds as a egg replacement. And it came out really good. Here's Virginia. Are you coming to bring me something? No, I thought I heard Josiah make a decision. Oh, she's coming to check on Josiah, not to bring her mother anything. I see how it is. So anyway, we um, had that for lunch. It was really good. Then we went back outside. Oh no, we la I laid the little ones down for nap. And the girls were on a video call because on Thursdays, Virginia leads a Bible study for her sister, Naomi, and two young ladies who live in Tennessee that are 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. So they did their video call today. Um, I don't think I've mentioned on any of my videos, so I'm just going to mention it now. Virginia has recently written a second book. It is Letters 
It's Dear Ruth, Letters to a Younger Sister, Sister in Christ, Christ, um, which is about a young, young adult, Virginia's age, writing letters to her friend who's younger and trying to be an encouragement in Christian living. And so it is available on Amazon or write to us and we'll get you all that information. Maybe Mark will post a link. I don't know. We might forget. But Virginia wrote a book. It's good. Um, so where was I going with that? Oh, they did their Bible study. We went outside and walked and talked because we're just trying to figure out as a family what God has us doing this summer. We're working on some ideas for doing evangelism in our local area and what that's going to look like. So we were walking and talking and then for supper we had chicken and we made like a gravy from the broth that was left with vegetables in it. So I had carrots and onions and cabbage and spinach. We cooked all the vegetables up, added a little cornstarch to make it thicker and served it over rice. So that was good too. And our son came over to have, our oldest son, Nathaniel, came over to have dinner with his grandma, my mom, in the backyard, and then came up to visit us after supper. So we chatted with him. We haven't seen him for a a couple weeks. And the kids went and showed him a fort that they were working on in the woods today. And we showed them the swing, too. Oh, yes, we showed him our big swing out over the ravine. And then we got everyone ready for bed. We did other stuff today. Today was busy. Today was crazy. Uriah prayed. I'm tired. Oh, yeah. So Uriah prayed tonight. Uriah was really thoughtful about his prayer. Prayed for a lot of different people. Um, kept going. Like, usually Uriah's prayer is pretty short. Thank you. For the firefighters, the EMTs, and police officers, please give us the rest we need so we can wake up in the morning refreshed and ready to learn about you. Or something like that, because I say something similar every night. That's usually his prayer. But tonight he was actually praying by name for a bunch of different people. Do you remember anything specific you wanted to say about that? Or just... It was just very thought out. It was good. And then Josiah prayed, and Josiah was having some brain fog. He was having some seizure activity tonight. Not like full on seizures, but just feeling seizure. And he couldn't remember Waylon's name. So we went through the entire Schrock family trying to figure out which Schrock he was talking about and figured out it was Waylon. Um, he prayed for the rest of the Schrock. I thought too. that was the one that he wouldn't forget. Right. But he forgot yeah, it. Tonight. Take a window and dawn and, and so um, it was good. We had a good night and then everybody went to bed. They read books. The girls and us watched a little video and then talked and then we talked to Virginia and it's hard raising teenagers and as they go into young adults because you have to help them like make decisions about their future. Like it's hard enough doing it with little kids when you're trying to convince them that like, yes, you should learn to love vegetables because they're good for you. Or, you know, yes, you should learn to go on the potty because, you know, that's a good skill to have. Or even, like, yes, you do need to learn how to do, you know, basic math because that's going to help you in the future. But when you got to help the older ones figure out where they're going to use their time and attentions and abilities and sometimes having to say no to them, that that, while it is a good thing, is not the best way to use your time and pursue interests at this point very difficult because you feel like you got to be the bad guy saying no this isn't the right thing for you right now well you never know when one of them's gonna go get hitched that's true none of them are getting hitched right now but yeah. you never know what's gonna happen we have friends who just got engaged last week two weeks ago mm-hmm. and they're getting married in a month so it can happen real quick but yeah it's just hard it's hard we got the you know a nursing infant who's laying here on the bed who's not even nine months old yet. And the possibility that one could be out of the house. And then Nathaniel, who's been out of the house for years now, coming to visit tonight. It just makes everything. Oh, and I had a good... I was super excited. He made some offhand comment, and he probably didn't even realize that it made any difference. But he said something tonight about, I'm so glad you guys taught me fractions, because so many people don't know fractions nowadays. And he just doesn't usually say stuff like that, of things that he is excited we taught him when he was in school because he didn't really like school all that much so that was like I I was very excited he probably doesn't even remember he said it but it was very exciting to me (laughs) that's what you get when you're a homeschool mom so anyway that's what we did tomorrow Mark has a doctor's appointment so Naomi and I are going to hold down the fort here while Virginia drives him to his appointment and that's about it I gotta make a Walmart pickup so prices are starting to level out I think for some foods um our 
our egg prices went down by like a dollar fifty for a sixty count, so that was exciting. So anyway, what? Oh yes, they're gonna eat food tomorrow. They're the little ones have all been playing soldiers all day long, so they've been talking about rations and all kinds of stuff. So I gotta figure that all out tomorrow. But anyway, we will see you guys tomorrow on herding little cows to the glory of God. Bye.